Right, so data modeling is a really important step or you know phase in database design. <clears throat> and when we talk about data modeling, we refer to one of these three stages or phases in the development process. Okay, so it's, it's consisted of a conceptual data modeling or conceptual design and have a logical design, and then we have the actual physical uh, data design. Okay, so I'll just put a note in here saying that, that all relational database systems, okay, this is true for all database systems, uh, not, um, may not be true for, um, you know, uh, the NoSQL databases, but this is the structure type of database system must have at least the following three uh, things. Okay, so the table, which in this case, is the actual what we call the table or, or a entity uh, should be uh, should be uh, used or should be created in such a way so that it will describe one and only one entity. Okay, so an entity we'll look at a little bit later. The meaning of entity is an actual record. So the table should be very unique. It should describe that particular per object like a person right it's, it's very unique you only you only refer to about that person anything any descriptions or or adjective we describe about that object that person should be related to that person only you should not include like you know my cars my house or my workplace things like that they're not of the same type so the table should be very uh, specific okay so think about an object or rent a program design as well you when you create a class for a pro in a program, that class should be very specific to one thing, an object, a class of a car, a class of a tree, right? Very specific. And then the next one is that all the rows must be unique, okay? Meaning that um, it, in this case, it refers to a key we call the primary key. And I'm sure you already kind of seen that already when you do your homework assignments. And we talked about that briefly in the past, that every table has a unique key called the primary key or the PK a key, you see that in the notation. And then uh, last but not least, the column and the row uh, order uh, should not be, should not matter, okay? So the order of the column, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be in a certain order. I mean, it's nice to have it in order so that it's easier for us to understand, but it's not going to cause any problem in the, uh, in the, in the database table because usually the order of columns and the rows, you do sorting, you, you do that after the fact, right? After you pull the data out, you can rearrange the columns in any way you want, order the rows and a record any way you like. So, so that is the, the query part of it, but data table itself, it's not required, it's not important, okay? So, so it could be in any order, doesn't matter. <clears throat> All right, so down here, is look at the conceptual design. It's a high level design, very high level, just concepts. And it's usually it's a map of concepts and relationships. And it also where you will list all your business requirements for the for the for the design, right? What does it need? What does it require? Um, things like that. So if you like the same idea as if you were to build a house, right? So before you even start building a house, you have to have this conceptual design of a house. Like, what kind of house do you need to build? You know, is it a uh, a single story or is it a tri level? Um, it does have a basement, right? How big is it? Uh, how many rooms do you want? So all these are just the requirements you need to put together, right? Before you even start the blueprinting design, right? So the conceptual design is very high level. Uh, design. So uh, usually, uh, this is this is this this step is um, it took place when you create a project of some sort and you have no. It's a like a brand new project. Then you need to gather that that information. So it, it involves in that case. If you were already given some data already, if somebody already has some data, has some table created, has some raw data already then you may already kind of skip this part already. You're gonna go directly to the logical design, okay? So here's an example of that uh, using uh, some notation here. We have a student has some kind of 
uh, association or relationship with a course and vice versa, right? So what what kind of relationship do they have? And you and based on this design, you can say, oh, a student will can take a class, and then a class can also have a student, or can a class have more than one student? Yeah, can a class has class has zero student? Um, I don't know, depend, right? So that is a requirement. You have to specify that and your requirements, okay? So can a student take a class? Uh, typically, yes. Can a student take more than one class, right? You have all those rules defined. These are the business requirements, right? And can a student be a student if the student doesn't take any class, right? All these things have to, have to be uh, defined before you even start the design process, okay? So that is the conceptual design, the overall map uh, of the program, like the, the, like the roadmap. So for this week, we're going to look at the second phase, which is the logical design and uh, more. Okay, this is where you actually start building or writing or creating the diagrams for the, uh, the database itself. And you saw this in the database design, right? You saw, I show you the table and you go to the David database design and you, you show that you select the tables, you see all these tables look similar to this one here, has the lines connected to each other and some may be independent, but you see a bunch of lines and you have some numbers and the golden key and things like that, right? So that is the ERD, we call the entity relationship diagram, okay? So it gives you the physical uh, um, layout of what these tables are like and how they're related. So this is a blueprint um design or template and it consists of entities okay entities here is uh, sometimes is used to refer to the actual object of that type or sometimes it's also referred to the table because again this table student really is the blueprint to create a student instance by right? a student record okay so the actual entity itself is the individual record of that student so you will refer to that student by name or by the ID, right? It's the actual object, okay? So that's the entity. And then here is an example of that logical design. So notice here, the logical design, we have more information than the conceptual. It's very broad, right? Just the type of, of, of uh, entities. Here, we're going a little bit deeper. We're adding the actual fields into each of these entities or tables. Okay, so each student has some unique ID, has their information about them, and then we have a course over here, course ID, course name, and then this is a, another table, we will call this as the junction table, and has to do with the type of relationships, we'll talk about that later as well, and you, all, you also need something like this to design your physical uh, table, but you see that these two uh, uh, student and course table are joined by another table in between. So again, this is the junction table that connects the two. Um, the reason why that happens is because this is a, um, we'll look at a little bit later, it's what's called a many-to-many -many relationship, okay? So this symbol here, the little three like crow's feet here, or foot, cross foot, looks like the three lines, just say from many to many. So they have that, in that case, is a business requirement. We, we assume that a student can take many classes, okay? That's why we have the three you know, cross foot here. And then we also say that a course can be taken or enrolled by many students, right? So it's a many to many relationship. And drawing, we do something very simple like this to be a little bit more specific and the logical design, we add another table in between to make this work, okay? So we cannot just like um, do like this and, and the physical design, when you actually write the code, it won't work like this. You have to create additional table to make it work in the physical design. We'll see that next week. <clears throat> okay, so the logical design is the blueprint. It is a non-system specific, meaning that you can create this, it, it'll work in any database system. It doesn't have to be SQL Server, right? it, it, would, it would work for Oracle, uh, my SQL, my progress SQL, or SQLite doesn't matter. As long as it's a uh, relational database systems, this will work. So you don't really care about what system you need when you create this design. 
And then after that, we once we have the logical design created, it's all good to go. Then we go ahead and start the actual, the physical design. So the physical design here is the actual database and the entities, in this case, tables creation. And this is now very specific to a certain system, right? So in this example here, we are creating a table called position using SQL server, right? So it's a very specific to that system. And because it's very specific, you know, the code here may not work for another system, right? So like, it may not work uh, in, in Oracle. So you have to kind of, um, you know, make some modifications or changes if you want to port it into another uh, system. Otherwise, you have to write in such a way so that everything can be portable over, port over them. That's fine too. And it will take a little bit more work to do that. But um, again, that's part of the design, right? The basis requirement. What database system are we going to use? If you're going to use Oracle, then your physical design should be based on that. Okay, if you're going to make it so it's kind of cross platform across as uh, database servers, then you want to make sure your code is, you know, portable in that way. So again, that's part of the business requirement early on uh, in this stage. Okay, so uh, we'll look at the um, example here is I showed you here what's called a um, OLTP and the OLAP, so two common types of databases uh, system used in uh, industry, okay? So uh, the OLTP is the online transactional processing system. These are the common, most common ones used today in e-commerce, anywhere you go. This is actual live data, okay? It's like you go to Amazon, go to Walmart, um, you purchase something at the store, these data are always changing. So it's constantly changing. So it's live. So uh, more than likely, probably 90 or 99% of the database you see online is an OLTP type. And the ones that we're creating is really the OLTP type. Okay. The other type is the OLAP. OLAP here is online analytical uh, processing database systems. And these are used for like, uh, you know, data mining, data analytics, right? Because in data analytics, you just basically pull some historical data and you know model it and create some kind of um, you know system what I'm um, design and then use that to make predictions, right? So so we focus mainly on the OLTP type. Okay. So again, here just some definition of what those types are. You can read about them here. We're gonna jump down here to the ERD. Okay, the ERD. The entity relationship diagram is a tool. It's a tool, um, really, it's a, a mechanism or a, a way that helps database uh, administrators create uh, databases. Okay, And there are many different ways how to do that. Um, so I showed you here the three different types of uh, ERD used in the past, and maybe some are still used today, but uh, these are like different ways how we can you can create databases using just some diagram to show you. Okay, so this is like a, a like a card, right? A card of particular um, a customer, and then each of these each each of these card is an actual customer, right? Or a person itself. <clears throat> okay, like an object. This is very um, probably you know antiquated and it's and it's old. We don't use that anymore, I guess. The other one is something like this you might see. Okay, you see, you see a, a, um, a database here has a lot of, um, a table here has a lot of object inside. So each of these is an individual entity, right? So that is another design. And then here is another one we showed earlier, it's just a box, okay? So this is like the high concept, conceptual design approach. So let's go back here. Some, add, some vocabularies we need to look at, okay? The uh, entity type, the type here refers to a category or the actual name or type of database tables, it refers to the table you want to create. So for example, the employee table, the name of this employee type table right, is called employee. So we expect this table to represent employee. So it's an employee type, right? So it just just all it means. Um, it's it's a technical term, but really it's just the actual name of your table. And usually, you should name your tables uh, in a very meaningful way. So if it's employee, then you know they should contain employees. You shouldn't put like 
cars in here, right? It, but it doesn't make sense, okay? So the type has to be uh, meaningful as well and, and concise. So we have like employee, student, a class, all these are considered as the entity type, what type. Right? <clears throat> and then we have the attributes, okay? Attributes, uh, oh, by the way, these terminologies here, the entity, the attributes and entities here, these are generally used when you are doing the logical design. When you move over to the physical design, then we don't call, I mean, they have a different terms for these, right? Basically we call it tables and columns and rows. Okay, so these are the physical, uh, the names or the vocabularies used uh, when you do a physical design, you refer to the tables, like, like in the assignment, you know, um, join, you know, table user to table um, or, uh, stores or something like that. So the actual table names are used or referenced in the physical design. But when you hear the terms entity attributes and, and things like that, these are usually referred to the logical design. Okay, so the attribute here is just basically the columns. And these are, if you think about an object and the class, uh, um, you know, uh, scenario would be the name fields, like the data fields of a class, okay? And uh, so, for example, like this employee ID, the address, the, the uh, name, these are all like uh, uh, descriptions, so the adjectives that describe this entity type. So the entity type is a noun, right? <clears throat> the noun, the attributes, although they're also noun, but they're usually, um, you guys, you can refer to them as the adjective that describe this particular entity or noun, okay? And then the actual entity itself is the actual values. In this case, the record itself, right? A single record is the actual entity of this type. <clears throat> so John, for example, is the actual object of a person or student type, okay? So those terms are uh, used in, when you talk about ERD relationships. Okay, so down here, <clears throat> When you design databases, there are two classical approaches, and this is also common in uh, program design as well. Uh, you know, maybe not possible in like uh, building design, but um, and usually in programming and uh, database design, you have these two approaches. You have the top-down and the bottom-up approach. So which one do you use? It really depends where you are at and the development also depends on whether you have some data already uh, given to you or whether you have to start from the very beginning where no data are present and you have to collect data. Okay, so those two things will take into account. And if you do have some data uh, already, then you can do a hybrid of those, right? Do both of them, some top down, some bottom up. Okay, so the design here, if you look at this, if you can see we have the conceptual model up here, so if you go into top down, top down is used when you don't have anything given to you. <clears throat> so you create a new project, a new game, a new app, it doesn't matter. And you need to uh, come up with, with you know, some database tables or database uh, system to store data. So how do you start from there? You know, how many tables do you need? What kind of tables do you need? So if you were to design a video game, for example, you might need a table for the player, right? And you might have a table for, um, you know, the the uh, like the, the world or the map, right? The, each each world, each level. You have a, a table for the weapons, you know, one for um, the enemies. So all those are different classes or different database tables, right? So conceptually, you design that, and then from there on, you go down from that, right? Really, really broad topic. You go down, okay? So in the hero class. What do I need, right? So you have you define that okay. I need a hero class. I need an enemy class. I need a an, um, a weapon class or a table, right? From there on, okay. So in the enemy or the hero class or table, what attributes do you need? So you're going down to the very very um, low level or very finite um, uh, uh, you know, attributes, right? It has a name for the attribute. You may you might have a class, and the hero could be a mage or it could be a um, I don't know, uh, um, a wizard or something, right? So you have different classes, they have their, their names, you have the HPs and, you know, uh, uh, and, and so forth, right? 
uh, and then same thing for the other one. So you, as you can see, we're going down from the top to the bottom, from something very conceptualized, very broad to something very, very granular, okay? And the bottom approach is just the opposite. Okay, you can think of it doing the bottom of approach. So you can say like, okay, like back to the game. Okay, you, you think directly to the things that a hero or um, a, a character has. Oh, a character has a name. You know, put the name down. Okay, it has a, it can carry a certain type of weapon. Uh, it has, you know, maybe it has certain um, uh, type of, of abilities. You, you, you put that, you list all those input into those details and it has a class. Um, it has a, a, a level of some sort, right? So it has skills level, and then you put all those together. Say, so, well, this one he belonged to the um, the hero class. I created a hero object or person, and some of these also related to the enemy class, right? So you go up that way, and then all these belong to another table, and so forth. So you go the bottom up approach that way. Okay. So uh, either way, uh, it's fine. Some people like to do it the top down because it's easier. Uh, if you already have an idea of what you want, then you can go from the bottom up. You can list the details and then make it broader, broader as you go well. If you are still kind of like brainstorming what to do with it, you will basically go the top-down approach, right? I'm going to list all the objects I need first, and then I'm going to go into each object and list the details. So uh, so I would say that, um, you know, I don't know who would use more or the other. Um, it depends on the project type, okay? So in terms of databases, it's the same idea, right? So if you were given no data, you build from scratch, then it's likely that you will stop, you will start from the, um, you may start from the uh, a top-down approach, okay? or, you, or maybe even bottom-up, because you're like brainstorming, uh, sometimes you do both. It's called a hybrid. You start somewhere in the middle, and you go both directions. If you're already given a set of data, some really raw data that somebody have, you know, I have an Excel sheet of, of all the um, data I collected from an event or some sort, and they give that to you and they want you to design a database for that. So in that way, you have some raw data right, already, and then you would then go in from there, which approach do you take? Okay, so again, it's, it's dependent on the type of data you have. Okay, so um, let's keep that in mind. <clears throat> so if you if you go into like a, a, you know SQL Server and you start creating code already, then usually in that way you're actually doing um, you might be doing the bottom up approach. Okay, <clears throat> right. So down here, <clears throat> the process is before you start creating the ERD or the um, logical design, is you have to make sure that the following are already kind of um, defined, like the business cases. Again, these are the requirements. And this is for the concept design, right? You have to have that in mind already. And then you would then you know, define the entities, what type of theme, the theme would be like, um, commonly theme would be like, uh, what type of database tables are these for? So if you create a, an app or a program for a organization, you know, maybe these tables are related to that organization. So you're going to have like employee uh, departments, um, uh, their, their sales and, you know, HR, right? All those are related to that theme only. And then if you focus more only on the, let's say the sales department or um, the um, R&D, right? Development team or department, then those have a different theme itself. <clears throat> so so the, the way you would name your tables will be more meaningful in that sense, right? So if you have like a theme, for example, a, a college, right? Your table would be very related to the college. You have student classes, uh, uh, you know, books and faculty and things like that. Now, you're not gonna have certainly a table of games, right? It's not a common theme. Unless you have like sports, then that would be a sports theme. But in the school in general, you, you have something like that, right? Very common. And then you have, you know, the attributes you want to do, and then you have to define some primary keys. And so every table should have a primary key. This is a key that is unique across the entire table. There's no duplicates, and it must uh, represent a single instance, a single record of that particular uh, um, entity, okay? <clears throat> like there cannot be two Jeffrey, right? Or can there, you know, maybe in a um, 
different world, different dimension. I don't know, like this movie you see, <laughs> but there's only one Jeffrey, Jeffrey in the entire universe, right? So like that. And then foreign key, we'll look at that a little later. Foreign key is another very important key uh, that is used in generally to um, map or to link two or more tables together. So it's not possible to link two tables without using a foreign key if they are somehow, if they are related. Okay, it doesn't mean that you are not able to query data from two tables that have no relationship. Of course you can, it doesn't matter, you can, but the data may not be meaningful, right? But if they are related, then usually these two keys are used to form a very um, strong bond or strong connection between the two. And sometimes we create something what's called a dependency or um, uh, some kind of referential integrity between the two tables. So one cannot exist. Uh, it's like the the the, um, the foreign table uh, or the we call this the child table cannot exist without a parent table. So it has a really strong bond between the two, okay? Um, so if you think about this, like a person <clears throat> has um, like organs, right? Organs would be another, a child table that has all types of organs, but the organs cannot exist without the person. And you can say true the other way too, right? But which one is more, um, which is stronger, okay? So the entity again, is a thing, is the noun in the real world that we can actually refer to. It can exist independently by itself, or sometimes it needs to be uh, dependent on other things, like I mentioned about organ, right, like that. <clears throat> and so they're classified under two uh, major uh, types, and there are many more, but these are the two most important or most common types, um, the tangible and the intangible types, right? Tangible will be something you can see in the real world, like your person, a car, or a house, as opposed to a tangible. Intangible would be like uh, something conceptual or something in memory or in a program, like a bank account. You can't really see that in the real world, right? Or the address, right? It's just a, a, a sets of number you can look at. Um, and then the like student grade, I'm a senior, I'm a freshman, right? You don't really, you can't really tell and see that in the real world. Uh, it's a some kind of uh, indication only, right? <clears throat> so two types, uh, at least uh, in, but they're all actually nouns. Okay, so down here, next one is an example of an entity um, uh, diagram. <clears throat> I'm going to show you different um, properties or components of an entity. So when we draw entity uh, diagrams, ERD, we usually refer to a diagram that looks like this. Now, this is the, the most common uh, type nowadays used to um, design databases. Close the door. So you will see a diagram looks like this. It looks kind of similar to the UML diagram. If you have used that in software development programming, where we have the class name at the top, very identical. Okay, so the name, the, the box on the top is the actual name of the entity. Uh, it's usually named using the camel case, okay, uppercase, the first letter of every word in, in, in there. Um, the same rules for creating classes in computer programs, right? <clears throat> That's why we mention that all the time when you write programs, uh, follow the convention. And then, so, and then we have, the next word now is the primary key. So this key here is the unique key that identifies every instance of this entity, <clears throat> the actual object itself, right? It has to be unique. Like I have my own social security number, you have your own. So that is a unique key that only one person, I guess, in America can have, right? It does not apply to if you go overseas, of course, but in, in, in America, for example. <clears throat> okay, so that is listed here. Um, and then again, the convention here follows the camel case, right? Lower, lower case here and then the primary key here, again, it's just a convention. It doesn't mean that you should, you have to do this way. You don't have to, okay? Uh, sometimes uh, you will see it's underlined here. The underlined, just the indication that this is a primary key. And it, it's also indicated on the left column here, it has a column on the left. <clears throat> sometimes you see the line, sometimes you may not see it. But again, this is a common one. You see it's a line on the left column. And if it's a key, primary key that you see the F 
uh, the PK here for primary key. If it's a foreign key, then you see the, uh, the acronym FK, okay? Sometimes you see the, um, the AK for the alternate key, meaning that it's, um, it's, a diff it's a different key as well, but you see that as well. Um, you might see that later in, the, in some notations. <clears throat> the underneath that you have the other attributes, right? The actual column or fields, like the, you know, the first name, last name, you know, age, uh, address and so forth like those. So, so that is a, an entity. So all tables will look something like this when you design it, mm -hmm. right? So types of entities, there are two major categories. <clears throat> One is called a strong type, sometimes referred to as the domain. These are independent and they're strong entity. That means that they can exist by themselves. Right. So, so if you think of um, a student right, or a car, they can exist. A student is probably debatable, but maybe a person is probably more right. A person can exist for themselves. A student, you can debate saying that, oh, you know, if if I'm if I'm not enrolled in a class or in a school, I'm not a student, right? So I can't exist, right? So it, it's again depend on depends on the business logic that you have, the requirements. Then the weak ones are things that uh, that would depend on one of the other uh, entities, like the table. Like for example, enrollment, right? Enrollment cannot exist without students, right? So there's no enrollment. Therefore, if you don't have any students enrolled, so that is a noun, but really it's weak. It cannot exist without students. So that is a weak type. Okay, so again, the race, right? A race cannot exist without cars or racing, right? <clears throat> or, a, or a person, it doesn't matter what kind of race it is. So something like that is, um, it's a weak entity. Okay, so there are other as well, but these are the two common ones. And then we'll look at relationships. So tables are created um, because of the relationships and the term relations here <clears throat> really refers to the actual tables for the entities. That's why these are called relational database systems. They are related somehow, okay? And examples I do here again, back to that, just the entities, the table themselves, that. And then uh, each table has a primary key. You must have a primary key. If you don't have one, usually um, the database system will have one already it uh, created for you. <clears throat> Otherwise, it's 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 um it could be a problem if you you know move data over to a different uh, system. They might um you know uh, contradict or overlap. So the primary key. We'll look at this later when we do the normalization and uh, unit seven. So the key can be what's called a natural key or a surrogate key, okay? And this is used to de define what type of key you're using, what type of column you need. Like for example, if you think about it in a person, like we have our social security number, this is something that we don't just make it up. Of course, somebody has to make it up in the government system, but by assuming that below that, right, it, it, it is applied, it's given to you when you were born, <clears throat> okay? So because of that, you always have the, that same SSN pretty much for the rest of your life, right? So it's a natural key. Same thing for the VIN number of a car, right? When they built a car, the car, the car become existing, existing uh, to ex existence, they create a new VIN number for the car. It's given to that. So it's naturally designed, assigned to the car. You cannot change it, right? Same thing with the ISB and for a book, okay? So this is called natural keys. The surrogate key is something that you can made up, make up as we go. Like, uh, the actor's table. I can make up the actor ID. I can call it what I want. Actor one, two, three, actor, you know, uh, James Bond zero five, doesn't matter, right? This ID that you make up or username is also something you make up along the way, right? You create an application and you let user create own unique username. It's something that is not very uh, given to you naturally, okay? <clears throat> so uh, these are common terms, again, you will hear in database design. And then primary keys are always unique. They must be unique and they cannot ever be known, right? You must have some data. Otherwise it's not a primary key. 
Okay. So then databases have relationships. Okay. Because I mean, it's just database tables, I should say, have relationships. Uh, unless you have only one table, then you know that's for itself. But usually, uh, in an application, you will probably have more than at least two tables or more. Okay. And we have those two tables or more. Do they have some kind of relationship? And chances are, you know, they they will. They do. <clears throat> so we use that. Um, how do you define relationships between tables? Is by using some kind of special notation. Okay. And and you will see a little bit later that we use the arrowhead notation to draw the relationship between two tables <clears throat> uh, in the flow of data, kind of like in in data. Uh, program design, and we use something very commonly called the crow's foot notation. Okay, and so in database, there are three types of relationships. <clears throat> These are known here. The one to one. It's usually notated like using the one colon one here, like that. It's one to one. This is the left table. This is the right table. Okay, one to one. It has equal mapping, and then we have one to many. <clears throat> one to many, sometimes one to n. They might call, they might use n, or it doesn't really matter. It's just another letter because the m here, it could be an infinity, right? I don't know how long it can go, but it could be a different number. We don't know what that one is. And then we have the many to many. Again, the writing here, if it's if one is on the left, then we're saying that the table on the left refer to the left, and then it's on the right. Sometimes you see M call in one, right? Depending on which side of the table uh, you're referring to. But they're both still one to many or many to one, doesn't matter. And then we have the many to many, <clears throat> okay? And then there's a reason why you don't use MM here. If you use MM like this, then you don't know which is which. And sometimes that if you MM, then you're assuming that both have to be the same, right? Like one to one. And because they're not the same, because this table might have, you know, three, this might have five, right? For example, so they they may not be equal. So that's why they have to use different um, you know, letters to denote these are two different sizes. <clears throat> but indeed, there are many to many. Okay, so these are the only three types of uh, relationship you see in database systems, right? And also in, in programming too, I'm sure. So here, let's look at the one-to-one -one relationship. <clears throat> the one-to-one -one is, I would put some examples here, right? Uh, it's a one-to-one -one direct mapping. <clears throat> so one table maps exactly one, uh, well, one record from this table maps exactly one record of the other table. You cannot have two, okay? Uh, like a person is has exactly one social security number, right? So the person class over here or table has all the people, they may have the same name, of course, but then they're mapped to exactly one social security number, okay? So this is the SSN table. Each number will map exactly to one individual on the other table. There is no duplicates in that, but assuming a perfect system, right? So same thing with a student, right? You have one exactly one ID for, uh, uh, you've been student at Gateway, and that ID is assigned only to you, right? <clears throat> so there's a one-to-one -one relationship. This notation here is very simple, but it's also referred to as the Bachman notation by um, a, a database um, scientist who actually came up with the design here. So very simple design. So one-to-one, -one, and then we have the one-to-many or many-to-one. <clears throat> Is represented using the cross foot here, the three uh, lines here to show that many. The nothing on this side here is so it's one. Okay. <clears throat> so one, two, many. Or if we read the other direction, many to one. Okay. So some examples here again would be um, <clears throat> like uh, a, a person can own many cars, right? But a car can be owned or registered by only a single person, although it's not entirely true, but uh, usually like that, right? Okay, <clears throat> so um, that that's the case. And then we have the many-to-many. -many. So again, the both, the crossword on both sides. So like a, a bar can sell many beers, 
right? Okay, so so one type of beer can be sold in many bars, right? Okay, so um, that's what that means. I can a um, a, a a student can enroll in many classes. A class can have many students. Okay, so that is what this means. <clears throat> Now, there's another term called cardinality. Okay, cardinality refers to the degree of relationship. Okay, this is the number of instances, okay, number of actual objects that one table can exist and another table. Okay, so kind of back to, to this one here, many to many. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the cardinality looks something like this. So it's another table I pulled from the video. Okay, so again, the notation is has to do with the actual number itself. So uh, these symbols here kind of give you the meaning of that um, here. So so we say has exactly one. This diagram doesn't show you um, you know the detail, but um, <clears throat> so we say this this book here has exactly one author, right? Although entirely not true, but again, based on your business rules we can rule out we can say that requirement is a book can only be written by one author right so so it has one author and that is the cardinality so uh, it will be like a m colon uh one right so the author can write can have many books okay so it has more than one book or it has none also <clears throat> Okay, another thing that you will run into is you have what's called repeating fields, okay, like these right here, the subject one, subject two, subject three, subject four, right? You don't want to do this in a database design. For example, like if it's a book, if it's a person, you know, I have like a, a phone type one, I can have another phone, like the home phone number, my cell phone, my landline phone, my business phone, my car phone, right? What else? Because later on, if I added more phones in there, you have a problem because you have to go back and then modify your table. And that way, you might have a problem because some your your table already has data. If you add, if you make changes to, um, if you make structural changes to your table, it might cause some problem. <clears throat> so you have to design that early on to to make sure everything is correct. So we have a something like this. It's better off to move these out and create another table for that, we'll call it phone or telephone. And then in that, that telephone, we can list the type and then the actual number. And then when you know, link that to a particular author or a person, okay? <clears throat> so that way it, it's, it, it's not problematic. And, and we'll learn that later when we do a normalization in unit seven. Okay. And then again, if you look at the names here, the name convention, so all the foreign keys and prior keys, all the keys should be all capitalized like this. And then the um, the column names, uh, as you can see, are using the camel case in this example here. You can use camel case. You can use um, uh, the underline or all over case like this, fine too. The entities, the tables are usually singular noun only. <clears throat> okay, although you will see people use like you know, uh, scores and points and users, right? Um, the convention is to use only singular because we're referring to a single instance of that table, okay? <clears throat> Unless the word itself is plural, but it's, you know, it's singular, like series, right? It can be used in, in singular term as well. <clears throat> 